Those who've been with the channel for a while know this suitcase looking box. That's right, it's Streebog time. This time the SP9A3G, G as in Glock mags. Tabletop review and field strip coming up next on GB. With a shorter overall length, but a longer barrel than the Scorpion, and now the roller-ish lock delay, bus recoil, it's no wonder that the Streebog has become so popular. We've been covering these things for years. This is now the fifth variant that we're showing, and it all started right here with the first interwebs video on the Streebog. If you want to see any of the, the other variants, including one that actually looks like this, because we went to Slovakia and shot it, check out the Grand Power playlist here on the channel. We cover all of it. I forget now how many dozen videos I've done on the Streebog, but we've covered pretty much everything there is to cover. They're still shipping in these uh, suitcase looking boxes with the pre-cut foam. You get your lock, a spare set of flip-up sights, in case you break them, because they are plastic, although there are aftermarket metal options out there, and three magazines. This one being the Glock compatible one, ships with three Korean made stick mags of standard capacity, and the manual. Always look at the manual, why? Because it shows us how much the company wants you to understand the product. It includes a warranty card in all the languages where these things are sold. They are a European creation coming out of Slovakia. Um, the ammunition recommendations on here, it does not say, it just says CIP or SAMI. So there's no warnings about steel or aluminum casing, which sometimes in PCC type things, this is not a carbine, so it's not a pistol caliber carbine. I call it more of a PDW type thing, personal defense. I don't know, large format pistol is the safest way to describe it. Anyways, um, it just says CIP or SAMI. Um, the description and instructions are fairly clear. And the photos, that's right, photos are full color showing you how to do everything. Don't worry, I'll show you that soon. Just wanted to walk through the manual itself. Let's get this thing out of the box and take a look at the gun itself. Some of you may be wondering why Glock mags, and that's because obviously curved magazines don't work for stacking 9mm. Just kidding, I'm just poking at the folks who said that stick mags uh, of 9mm don't work. I've already done videos <laughs> where I showed many historical examples of it working just fine. But really the attraction to the Glock magazine is that they are readily available and most shooters have a bunch of them laying around, probably from a Glock that they either are or are not shooting anymore. Including um, this one from XTAR, the guys that make another 9mm large format pistol. And as you see, it holds in and you get last round bolt hold, hold open. You get magazine ejection on this side and on the other side, because like all of the other 18 models of Grand Power that I've ever covered on this channel, all controls are fully ambidextrous. You've got a bolt release and catch on this side. Your safety is over here as well. And then when we flip it over, we've got everything in the same spots. This is one of the newer flat face triggers. If you guys want to talk trigger talk, since we've already shown it's clear. Immediate break. The weight feels good. It's not uh, not too heavy, not sub gun heavy or long. It's just an immediate break and a relatively short reset. So nice for a sub gun type deal, which of course they had the chance to redo this since this was originally designed as a submachine gun for military law enforcement use. This being semi-auto only US civilian model. Of course, uh, they had to rework the trigger, so it's nice to have that trigger set up in there. You notice up here it says US in that little bar there. I'll get into that once I field strip it. That's part of the locking mechanism. And if you've heard any of the rumor about ammunition issues, the original designed version of this roller lock, roller delay, I guess is a probably a more accurate description of it, was formulated around 124 NATO uh, loads, which are about 10% higher pressure than US ammunition, so needed more resistance. Additionally, being designed around professional users, 
um, they were assuming a little bit firmer shoulders or better hold, if you will, than most of us enthusiasts here in the US. As a result, with the very first of this roller lock delay, uh, if you had a soft shoulder or you had soft ammunition, such as a reload or even some of the uh, standard out of the box 115 grain stuff, it wouldn't quite stroke. Um, Grand Power has changed that and they now have this US marked locker uh, to help the gun cycle better with either soft ammunition or soft shooters. Um, <laughs> the muzzle is threaded, half by 28. It comes with a thread protector. Uh, we've run these suppressed and non-suppressed. If you're curious how it runs suppressed and if you're curious about what ammunition, uh, we have a mega what's for dinner test that we did with two different versions of Strebog, one suppressed and one not suppressed, and we ran 28 different 9mm loads through the gun. Go watch that to see what works and what doesn't. You see we've got plenty of pick rail underneath here for um, forward accessories. Uh, changing this cap out is very easy. It's not something that I can tell you how to do to install a brace because YouTube nannies will shut it down. But um, braces do exist now, pre-cut for specifically for the street bog. There are also adapters to be able to run um, a buffer tube type insert for buffer tube requiring braces. There's also one that collapses all the way down with rails, sort of like the cool MP5 style. You notice we've got integrated pistol sights. See that nub there? And there's a notch back here. That's what I like to use when I'm not using a dot. These also flip up though for a nice white dot there and aperture rear sight. Our charging handle is non-reciprocating as I lock the bolt open. You can see that bolts open and this can move back and forth. It's got enough friction in it that's not going to rattle around, at least not until you've got a whole lot of rounds through it. As far as I know, I've never had one rattle around on me, but it is reversible uh, once everything is deconstructed and field stripped. We've got M lock slots on the sides, rail all the way up the top. You've already seen this side, all of our controls. And as far as running a stick mag versus curved mag, I've noticed that the angle that this presents, you'll see more of it in the range video, is much closer to your firing hand. So maybe that's a better grab for some folks. I, I, I don't know, it's a personal preference thing. Um, I think it runs fine with the Grand Power mags. Uh, there's talk of bad mags out there. Of the 20 or so that we have and have run over the years, I think I've had two uh, bind up. So that's a one in 10 rate on a disposable thing like a magazine. Yes, that's higher than what we're used to, but it's not like the mags don't run at all. Going with the Glock option is just if you're a Glock guy and have lots of Glock mags, as far as I'm concerned. You can see we've got texturing on the front here for a support hand. Also that curve does give you space to hold a hand further back here if you'd like. I found support hand with the thumb on the charging handle is a nice way to hold on to the gun, but just a personal preference. End cap on the back, that will remove in a bit. Everything else is pretty standard and acceptable. If you're worried about clearing the thing because you've heard about how to clear or deal with malfunctions. We also have a dedicated video on that. Um, there have been some internet examples that I personally do not agree with based on my training and experience. I like to let gravity help me. So uh, check out that video if you're curious with it. As far as inside the Strebog SP9A3G and how this operation works, that's coming up next with the field strip. I do wanna mention before we dive in this, as far as magazine compatibility, Glock mag means Glock mag, but not all Glock mags, especially aftermarket mags, are the same. When we go to the range, we will hit um, our what's for dinner mag test on this. I have eight or 10 different variants of Glock pattern magazines, and we'll see how they run before we get into the rest of it. So field stripping is gonna be very familiar to anyone who is familiar with an AR. We're gonna to wanna to pop this rear pin. These pins are retained. They're also often in rather tightly. Might need something to tap, which I'll grab this long key here. And they do loosen up over time and become easier to drive out. 
this is really difficult to do with my filming um, setup here, but yeah, let me pause. It's funny is at the shop when I picked this up, I was showing the guys how it's done, and I didn't need to do that, but um, it's snug because it's brand new. So the pin comes at, to a stop and is retained. There's a little tiny spring inside I'll show you. Um, it is possible to pull the pin all the way out or to push it too far. So once you've knocked it a little bit, pull the rest of the hand. From there, it hinges open like so. You do not need to drive out the front pin, although you can if you want. And to take a look inside, you see we've got signature steel chassis. Um, you can see that lining in there. That's a classic ground power thing. All of the firearms that I've ever reviewed have that, including their pistols. They were doing it way before the SIG 320 made it cool. Uh, what that does is means that your pins, everything that's holding stuff together, is supported by steel, not polymer. Makes for longer lasting, also makes for better trigger feel because there's not as much flex and they don't wear out as quickly. Inside here you can see that little tiny spring that I was talking about. Those can fly out uh, if that pin's not in there, so just be aware of that. Um, it's a tiny spring, an odd like paperclip looking thing. Try not to lose it. Then to get it further from here, we have our sight out of the way and we're gonna tap this plate downward. I use that spot right there and just beat it with my hand a little bit. It comes down and then straight out and you can see the hook shapes in there. Um, that's why it's gonna come down then out. Bring our charging handle back is going to bring out the bolt and its buffer. You saw that pin fall out because it's just retained because it's got nowhere else to go. That's the roller and the angle that's on this piece here is what creates your locking. This gives you clear openness all the way inside. I can't get good camera angle and lighting inside of it, but you'll see that the receiver itself is an extruded piece of aluminum and everything is pressed and pinned into place. This is where also if you wanted to reverse your charging handle, bring it back to here, this open spot, now you can drive the handle out and stick it back in from the other side. Placing this all back together so that it makes a little more sense. This piece sits in here and that pin. And when the action is forward, you can see it's dropped versus when the blowback starts and that pressure tries to push the bolt back, it can't. The pin gets in the way, the pin blocks it from moving. And it's only once that pressure has reduced things will shift and allow the action to move. Hope that makes sense. These carriers are used to be two piece. It looks like this is now one piece, but you've got a spring-loaded firing pin to prevent slam fires from happening and a nice beefy, beefy extractor there. This buffer is also a little bit thicker than I've seen in the past and this is a single guide rod setup. See that allows the travel and well lubricated. Slightly different than the Strubogs of past, but everything is replaceable and serviceable should you need to. Seeing the differences that are in this thing now has me pretty curious about how it's gonna run in our what's for dinner test because things have changed. The A1s are still available as are um, the A, well, I guess the A1s now are kind of an A2-ish, if you will, or A1.5, and, and then the A, those are a straight blowback setup, so they require more mass in the bolt, but these A3s with this roller lock delay have reduced mass in the bolt, which is kind of cool, because that's where you feel your recoil, and that's the whole benefit to having that. So, though it costs a little bit more because there's more parts, more machining, more engineering, etc., etc., um, these tend to shoot a little bit softer and they also suppress better. For those of you that are into suppressors and own them, um, the big problem with blowback 9mm is, or any blowback really, is once you put a suppressor on there, the extra pressure causes the action to open faster and so you get port pop, as they call it, which is noise and more stuff coming out of the ejection port, port. so it's not quite that silky smooth quiet as you'd expect. Having a delay on here helps make things a little bit smoother. We will test this unsuppressed. 
um, because that's the way it comes. And each suppressor is different depending on its make and design. And then you got the ammo factor. There's a lot of, a lot of variables that go into how a gun runs um, both noise and performance once you put a suppressor on there. And so I find it um, a little bit misleading and unfair to you guys to see how something runs with a suppressor on it. Because unless you're using the exact same suppressor and same ammo, your experience and results are gonna be different. Uh, so we'll run it just the way it came. When we get this out to the range, you'll see the first shots. Um, cold shot impressions. We are going to put a brace on this just for controllability, uh, increased safety and accuracy as well as an optic. Um, but cold shots will do full mag plus one using the included uh, Korean produced magazines. Then run through the multi mag what's for dinner to see which clock pattern magazines that I have that it runs with and doesn't. Then a what's for dinner test Classic GB gun style, 10 different loads to see how the gun runs. We may do some accuracy in there or not. Let me know what you guys think. I've already accuracy tested the Strebogs uh, in the past for magazine articles and Grand Power's adherence to a tighter than CIP required or tighter than European standard smoothness of barrel finish um, usually results in pretty good accuracy. So I've got um, high expectations for this thing and looking forward to an excuse to run more Streebog. Let me know what you guys think as far as Glock magazine or Power Ma or Grand Power magazine, um, which one you would prefer this angle. And if you're wondering, I'm not using the included magazine for these photos because YouTube freaks out over magazines of standard capacity. So I'm using a reduced capacity, but you can see we've got a very tight space here uh, between magazine and firing hand, um, the curved magazines and the standard Grand Power magazine, it seems like it's a little more this way and forward, so it's a little more open under here. Um, this, however, does make for something much more compact if you plan on storing or transporting it with the magazine in it. Uh, and that angle is all just due to the presentation angle of a Glock magazine. That concludes the tabletop review and field strip. Check out our other Streebog videos if you'd like to learn more about the platform. Otherwise, we'll see you on the range for the shooting impressions of the SP9A3G. Thanks for watching.